Up next on Inside Champ Car, the guy behind Flagtronics. Welcome to Inside Champ Car. I'm Brian Polanski. Bill Strong is here with us, like he always is, giving us that hokey wave that Bill does. Hi, Bill. Well, I could I could do the, you know. The Queen's wave? The Queen's wave. They're very nice. Very nice. Watching the uh, that show on TV with the Queen. There you go. God, I'm sounding like an old man. Oh, you well, that's because. I mean, don't make me say it, Bill. <laughs> Speaking of old men. Oh. oh I've known since he was a young guy. You know, compared to us, he's straight, still a young straight, guy, Bill. Straight out of Virginia Tech. Oh, I'm sorry. You know. <laughs> <laughs> James Ballinger. Don't call him Jimmy. He doesn't like that. I'll do the cross wave. <laughs> cross frame wave. Hello. You know, it's funny, James. I used to uh, live uh, just outside of Charlottesville. Oh, and yeah. Bill and I never met while I lived there. <laughs> but we knew friends. Uh, we had friends. Yeah. Yeah, we had yeah. friends. Yeah, we got introduced through a friend. You know, one of those one of those things where your friend says, "Oh, you know, I, I got a friend who's a car guy," and I roll my eyes, go, "Yeah, yeah, whatever," and yeah. and then I I meet Bill and and find out that he, he actually is a legit racing guy. You know, so actually, cool. I had a question yeah. about camera or microphones. Yeah, it was audio. And I posted it to Facebook, and and uh, Suzanne said, "Hey, I've got this friend who's a news guy." Yep. And you, you, you know, like okay, and then you said, "Hey, you got a friend that's a car guy." And, and I rolled my eyes. <laughs> yeah. Now I met I met James a long time ago, way back in the very early 2000s when he was working with a, a little uh, ECU company called Electromotive. Mm -hmm. And um, I met him through Troy Trulio, <clears throat> who he knew because I guess you both worked at the same place. Mm -hmm. And um, next thing I know, James is coming out on his motorcycle, and we're doing some some testing of products and cool and. Uh, He's taking. He has this habit of taking pictures of my junk piles. And mm. but hey, let's <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, start out like we always do yep. with Bill. You know, going to the end first. No, but, no, no. It's all good. Yeah. It's all good. So James, you haven't been on the show, but we've had other folks from your business there. But how did you mm -hmm. get started in this uh, this crazy car business? Well, I got interested in high school, and um, it just, I guess got bit by the bug as it were. And so I decided to go to college and choose a college that had a formula SAE program, which is the small open wheel race cars that students get to build up from scratch. And uh, the, the one that was near me was Virginia Tech and they had an excellent program. So I applied there, got, got to get in and spent years working on little race cars there and doing all kinds of, of work, doing uh, CNC machining, um, dealing with suspension, dealing with electronics, welding, uh, just kind of a little bit of everything. It's a, it's a great experience for anyone who wants to do it. And then afterwards, I, I left uh, college and went to Electromotive and uh, met, met Troy and then uh, met you also. <laughs> and uh, a few engineers there, we, we uh, went off and, and founded our own company called Powertrain Control Solutions. And instead of going the engine control route, we went the transmission control route. So we built uh, a ground up transmission control system that is um, very, very popular now. Um, it's been relabeled and some of the, the products are, are relabeled. Actually, I saw a company releasing one of the products I made in the early 2000s as a new product oh. last year, oh, <laughs> releasing wow. it at PRI. That was- It was pretty was, cool. I uh, I had yeah. one. I had one of the prototype ones for our V8 MR2 we did. Yeah. And, uh, it, that was actually the easier to put together and make work than the electromotive was that came with huge amounts of instructions. Yeah. So, but, yeah. yeah. The, um, the, the product I saw was, was actually not a transmission control unit at, at, at PRI last year, but, um, <clears throat> they, they focus now mostly on military and, um, uh, short run manufacturers more than the aftermarket. There's, there's more money there. Uh, maybe not, it's not as interesting, but there's, there's more money there. So oh, yeah. they, they went that route and, um, I went off on my own and started Ballinger Motorsports, and we've been doing that for years. Where we we have a wide catalog now of, of connectors, electronics, uh, wiring parts, like um, electrically actuated things like uh, injectors and solenoids, and uh, we have a, a good line of, of wideband products that we're well known for at this point. And a few years ago, I 
found that there was a strong need, uh, myself and some of the other guys at my company who were uh, doing grassroots racing in, in Champ Car, uh, we we saw that there was an opportunity to to help out with with some of the flagging issues. Um, we saw cars going around not paying attention to a black flag or uh, a meatball or you know having some issues here and there that we we felt we could really improve with the relatively we thought low effort at the time. Turns out it was it was pretty high effort, <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, we knew we could change the status quo at the time. We knew that we could make something that we could bring to the amateur market, the the everyman uh, race car. Uh, it, it wouldn't just be stuck at the top tier with, you know, thousand dollar or two thousand dollar pieces of hardware with yearly subscriptions in the thousand dollar range. We wanted to be able to to get something to make racing safe safer for the rest of us. You know, we all knew that they had great technology and in F1 and Indy and IMSA, but we wanted to get, get something that would make people safe at, at every level. Uh, so that, that was our goal. And I, I think we've, we've been able to achieve that. We've, we've, we've come out with a product. It's um, the base product here is the FT200 that's mandated in uh, champ car and it's being mandated in some other series. And uh, we're, we're able to sell that at a, yeah, there you go, Bill. Hmm. Yeah. We got, I think, I think this one's a, a, a little bit, newer here we got different yeah. flags on on this one i'll change yeah, it up. My, mine is number 237 so it goes way back <laughs> oh yeah this one is 1919 so right. yeah we're uh, you know into the thousands at this point yep uh which might have to lower the brightness so that the camera yeah, that's what can... i ended up doing on mine yeah so, yeah that's that's a really nice looking unit yeah, they we've done little things over time. There there are small changes. It's still called the FT two hundred, but we're continuously improving it over time, and we're we're improving the software, uh, firmware we're building in things, and we're making sure that we don't age that thing out. That it, it, we overbuilt it at the get go, so um, we can keep upgrading it, and we want to see years of service and everyone to get years of service out of it. It's not it's not an iPhone that has a new model every year. Can I make a suggestion that you rename it to the F two hundred because that's what Jimmy calls it all the time? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because he um, just he just logged on, so I want to hear. I want him to hear that. Just call it the F two hundred, and we'll be good to go. We, we uh, my, myself and um, uh, one of the guys we we partner with, uh, Kali Kali King, had a uh, talk with someone from from Fuel Tech. And all their products begin with FT, mm. so he'd he'd be really happy about that too. Yeah. We <laughs> before we, oh, Jimmy told me to shut up. I need to shut up. Sorry. <laughs> be, before we get into the d deep discussion on Flagtronics, um, and Bill doesn't know I'm going to ask this question, but I'm, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, the the evolution of motorsports technology. You know, when I started, it was dial gauges on your dashboard. Um, you are on pit lane with these things called stopwatches. Yeah. You know, you know, every lap and you had two stopwatches and you, you know, doing this kind of thing. And, you know, things like and, and writing times down. Writing times down mm -hmm. on a piece of paper and and you know, the idea of, you know, a, a dashboard system, the idea of like getting your lap times in front of you and your dashboard the idea of, uh, you know, video in your car, that wasn't a thing. Now, this is telling you how old I am, but that, that was stuff that you saw in IndyCar, and that was stuff that you saw in Formula One. And, and much like the technology of the rest of the world, all of that stuff, much of that stuff, is now come down in price to the point where dumb guys like Bill and I can afford it. And how, how did that evolution is it just the fact that just technology is evolving and you're being able to take advantage of it? Yes, in short. Um, the cell phone and, and smartphone revolution changed a lot of things for us. Um, really, we needed a revolution in GPS technology from right. the early 2000s to now, and there have been big steps there, and some places needed to open up their technology. So now we can, we can get satellites that used to be dedicated to military use that are now accessible from uh, the U.S., so the GPS system, the China system or Chinese system, uh, Beidou, and the uh, Russian system, and then the European system. So we soak all the satellite information from all of those providers, and, and there's a, a Japanese one and so on, 
Uh, so there's a there's a major revolution that that's hit. Now you can take your phone out and you can get navigation information uh, basically anywhere in the world that's that's quite accurate. And and the pace of technology there has really helped us. Just even the change in the last five years has been substantial. Right. Um, what's available now at the OAM level for the automotive market is uh, is really a big change. And then some of the um, data RF uh, information that's available now, some of the changes that happen there. Um, there are some big enabling technologies that, that really change things for us. Um, and they're still changing. So we're, we're able to benefit from those things. And so that that's really just going to get better over time. And one of the nice things about our architecture is that we, we have it as an open system, so we can actually add upgrades over time. Um, and we, we do have some upgrades coming. Uh, I think Bill's alluded to it, but one example is the the driver ID uh, system that's that's coming, and that'll be a, an extra little box essentially that'll allow um, <clears throat> orgs to spec something that'll see what drivers in the car, and they put a a puck on their helmet, or they can put a puck on their wrist, or it can be in their clothing, um, and you'll be able to know what driver is in there, but also we'll be able to get some more uh, high speed data related to BOP and. Um, be able to see what's what's going on at different parts of the track. Just get more information both to the org and to the racers. So cool. we can require those on E30s is what you're saying? Yeah. I mean, it's up to you what you require. <laughs> <laughs> That's your, your choice. Team your said goal. it here. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, we're coming out with a module that it's uh, it's an add-on. So it's uh, we put CAN bus on the original product, knowing that we would want to be able to do things like this. Um and the the running joke for the the add-ons was always the the sort of driver, you know, scream at the driver or shock them or something like that. You know, the, the, I remember that one. Yeah, that was, Morgan said we can make it so it zaps the driver. And, yeah, yeah. That, that was on the drawing board and in race control. Yeah. That always someone always suggests that, and you're like, yeah, that that was on the drawing board. That's always the running joke. But um, obviously, we as long as we put that unit in front of the driver and and we try to say, okay, you need to have in your frame of of view. You can't put it off where it's at a 45 degree angle halfway across the car or under your seat and yeah, that, right that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah it, so says, it's got... it's, it says sick because I don't have the system set up in my house. So yeah. Right. Yeah. It's my mind says why, but you, you actually, we also have programming. It's not inverted yeah. right now, but you can actually put it upside down and then have the text the correct direction too. So going to that, mm -hmm. and this goes back to somebody asked a question about timing and scoring, and we'll get there in, in a minute, but, mm -hmm. um, putting it upside down like that so we are you champ car is using it as a pit timer mm -hmm. so we're going to basically once it's all working correctly we see it work at every track we'll basically get rid of those timers when you right. come into a stop it will actually start counting your pit stop when you come to a stop at pit in you right. go and complete your stop you go out to pit out we're going to make sure you're authorized to be in the car and we're going to look at that timer and we're going to say, hey, all right, you've got 13 seconds to go. You've got to wait here until we until it it's zero, and then we'll release you if you're if you you've got every your belts tight and all that stuff. Um, but if we can't see it and we got to find it, yeah, then you know that's why in this year's rule book, there's actually a picture with a square around the area that we want you to put it in so that our uh, pit out folks can actually see them. And our pit yeah. in because pit in wants to see that it's working too, so. Well, luckily and, your frame of reference from from uh, an official in the pits is roughly the same as a driver needing to see it in their visible range yep. uh, in the seat. So the overlap there is pretty good, and the the spec there in the rules is is definitely helpful, and it it can be inverted so the signal still works um, correctly inverted. It makes a, a toro toroidal or a, basically a donut shape. It comes out of the uh, top, which is another question has, has come up every now and then, but the, the RF antenna is this guy, and it comes out like a basically a donut shape that comes out of the side there. Now, a couple of questions so far is, um, let's say, what future upgrades do you see going forward with Flagtronics? That's one of them, of course, we just talked about. And mm -hmm. then Fred from uh, Nelson Ledges said, uh, what did he say here? Flagtronics could couldn't have come at a better time. Corner workers are getting scarce, and he Fred knows this because he runs a track, and we've had other corners or other tracks as well talk about that. Yeah, 
Yeah, so it's um, <clears throat> we've we've been at more than a few events where a uh, corner worker hasn't shown up for the day, or they've been sick, or something else has happened. Um, so we'll see if we can meter the light on this thing. My camera will do it. This is a corner remote. Looks like it won't get yeah. the light, but it's saying full course yellow right now. Right. Um, and it's programmed for zone nine right now on this remote. And then I can bring that up, see if it'll. Not quite. Yeah. So there are three spots on this. And so what we can do when someone doesn't show up, we can flexibly change a corner remote to work for multiple zones. So we give them a remote and they can control, the, the one who did show up can control the visibility zones that they have for more than one spot. And we've um, done that also, many times. We have. We've we've had to. Yeah. Um and it's it's not org specific. It's happened to a lot of different orgs. We've seen it across the board that um, you know we we have a shortage for for one reason or another. Somebody said they were going to come, they couldn't. They got sick that morning. Um, They're just short outright, uh, various reasons. Um, as a racer myself, I want corner workers in the stands, and we provide the tools so that the corner workers will be in the stands and they have their um, control box, which uh, has the different flag conditions for the corner. Um, full track conditions are controlled in race control, uh, either via a full track remote or with the software. And we can you can control uh, individual corners from the software also. So if you have visibility from race control of several corners, then you can you can do that from race control also. Uh, but of course, you know you won't be able to uh, hear and smell what the corner right. worker will, would would be able to. So the the strong preference is always to have. The corner worker that's that's what we envision that's yep. what we want but we recognize that that's not always possible um and there are cases where there are club tracks that you know during their weeks they they don't have every station manned they're going to have a, a club day where they're manning you know just a few stations and uh between the corner remotes and between the control they have in race control they're able to do they're able to get a lot more control over what the cars see and what information they're provided with so uh, we're able to still make it safer even in those non-ideal conditions. Now, um, again, Fred asked a really good question. Um, is there a future for Flagtronics in a motorcycle application? Now, do you have that nose mount ready yet? Yeah, uh, yeah well, I have the nose strips that I wear all the time, right? I got a little like red <laughs> spot there from it. I was not gonna bring that up. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Brian probably saw me with the nose. I did. <laughs> I did. Yeah, we were together at Sebring yeah. this weekend. You know, yeah. the motorcycle. I, I was asking, did his wife hit him again? But uh, yeah, no. the motorcycle <laughs> application, though, uh, James, is interesting because you guys are working on a f small form factor for formula cars, yeah. mm -hmm. and that would be probably almost useful for that motorcycle application, right? It would. Yeah. So there are two things with the motorcycle application, um, and it's also similar to karting. So we, we, we're gonna have displays that will work for carts and for motorcycles. Yeah, they're a remote display and they can be mounted on the dash. Um, the downside is that for a cart or for a motorcycle, um, you have to look down. So right. long-term, um, we're we're going to have a, basically a helmet system that's gonna have a HUD and visible lights uh, that we're able to put in the, the driver's uh, or rider, depending on which one it is, uh, in front of their screen. So, yeah, we have we we're going to have solutions that accommodate those markets. It's really just you know when when we get to those, but what the timing is. Um, in in the short term, the uh, the remote display is a really good option, and then in the long term, we we'll have a full full helmet based system. Um, and talking about future technologies, uh, which was a question that you had earlier, Bill. That that so that's one of them, uh, the driver ID, and then the ability to get that directly up. Uh, in view for a cart uh, rider, motorcycle rider. Um, but we also have some uh, sort of upgrades over time that'll come through the pipe. So I know the higher speed will be coming um, for, for getting data back to the drivers. Um, we'll be adding things like CAN-FD. Uh, so that's a higher data bus. And one of the next generation ones will have two CAN buses. So that one will have our own expansion bus and then another dedicated bus to cooperate with uh, things like AIM, MoTeC, VBox. Um, and that's something that uh, we didn't have last year, at least early on, that we do this year now. 
We do have integration directly in the AIM software, so you can actually choose uh, Flectronics as a dropdown. And so you can put us as part of the alarm systems. So you can show it on a dash, and now you can also show it on your Smarty Cam and get it as an overlay in your video. Mm. Uh, and you can do that in VBox also. And increasingly, you're going to be able to do that. Um, where we have uh, Motec Joe has built a, a system into some of the Motecs, and uh, Matt Matt Romanowski mm. has uh, uh, built it in uh, for some of his stuff. Sentinel James uh, Candelaria he he got it built in with his uh, video system also. Um, and so each, each one of those has the, the nice overlay set up and, um, you know, the, the solutions vary. Um, and then we have it in race capture. Also, they're starting to do some video, um, the V box setup, you know, a lot of people use that one. Either as a spec setup, um, aims are nice. And the, the, um, Sentinel system has, has come on, on to the, the world and has, has provided a really good solution for a lot of people too. Yeah, so, so we, they are and they're a sponsor of this uh show as well. There you so, go. Yeah. So yep. uh Kyle Fegley asks, what about voice? So can, can I do you have a That's a, for a, the blind drivers. A future well, I, I want to get it so that yeah. you can not only <laughs> in my ear Color tell blind. me it's gone full course yellow, <laughs> but I also want Actually, it, yes. I, I also want you to have it so that I could have Gunther Steiner is the guy in my ear screaming <laughs> at me that it is a full course yellow. Can you work that out no. for us? Sadly, he's not at his post anymore. No, but uh, we've got lots of, of stuff where we can get his voice and put it in there. Yeah, I mean, I, I assume he's for hire now. You yeah. can probably get him to, we can get him on contract to start yelling yeah. into uh, into it. Uh, yeah, so it's possible. We haven't we haven't built it in, but um, there's no audio processing in the FT200 currently, but okay. um, creating a, a box that is can activated that would be able to dump um those that information to an audio signal would is absolutely possible. Cool. It would be, always be great to have that forty five pound <clears throat> speaker sitting over in the passenger footwell <laughs> aimed at you. Yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> but the the race bar guys have that handled. Oh they, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, just, they have a full on stereo system. They'll blast <laughs> Baby Shark for twenty four hours at a yeah. time. Oh jeez, and they do. They uh, no matter whether everybody in the the paddock says turn it off, they're, they're going to keep going. <laughs> and they still do it. Yeah. 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 yeah so. Na Navy, go Navy. <laughs> yeah. Um, those speakers are out there. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> So, so yeah, there, there, there actually is a lot of uh, future tech, technology coming. Um, one other thing we we will have uh, available for orgs right now, Champcar publishes the Marching Ants, uh, which is more of a race control focused view. We're going to have a view that is more uh, broadcast focused coming out. Uh, that's a little bit easier for that that purpose. Um, and for some series, we're going to have a driver based view. So we're going to provide a subscription service so the drivers can log in and see their their times some information about their car where their car is on track at any given point in time and what the flag status of their car is i know lots of racers especially at the champ car level have you know they they have radios which work uh some of the time yeah. maybe most of the time it depends on the team but um you know when the driver doesn't come back around again you don't you don't know they're not responding right. on the radio this this will tell you this will give you that information um and i know uh one one of our guys has come back around a few times and there's a little extra grass sitting in the front <laughs> you ask him about it and they're like no nothing happened you're like we can see yeah we can see for sure something so, happens we know so, <laughs> so so john Whitnauer just asked he says as a crew chief it'd be really cool to send a pit order yeah. the car but that would be a little dangerous wouldn't it? yeah so that's one um we we want to be able to give visibility and even that has to be vetted um and so we have to work with the org to to, to do that right we can't we can't open that up widely that's going to be org specific and that's going to have to get approval from the org um is it possible to do yeah absolutely it is possible but it is um you know you never want to see the outcome of a race affected by something like that Right. Um, right. So that's something we have to be extremely careful about. And again, have to work with the orc. Um, like, oops, Troy. Sorry, Troy. Sorry. <laughs> it said, yeah. I didn't mean that. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I can't, I can't imagine the conversation you'd have with Troy after that. Oh, he'd be yelling. I'd just be doing this. Stand yeah. Away. He, he would be yelling. Yep. <laughs> um, so, real, so, real quick. 
Yeah, go ahead. Be- before we, before we go forward, you you mentioned a word that that brings uh, amateur and grassroots racers to their to their knees, James. You said mm-hmm. you said the S word s- subscription. Um, mm-hmm. Before yeah. we go forward, c- can you clarify again the, the the basic operations of the safety portion of the Flectronics unit will or will not ever need a subscription? Uh, will not. Okay. We do not require a subscription to to use our system. There's no gatekeeping. We're not going to lock you out of any any of your core functions. Um, but of course, there's there's a need for us to have uh, long term recurring revenue. You know, we're trying to build these units to last, um, and a lot of that comes working with the orgs, their their service contracts, and that kind of thing. And there there are going to be things in the future. But um, you know, it's an optional service. If you want to be able to see where your car is on track at any given point in time. Um, and again, this is going to be org specific because some orgs will want that data so that they can use it. So not right. every org is going to make that available. But uh, for the ones that do, uh, you'll be able to see where your car is, what the flag state is, information about your car, um, and that'll be relatively low cost, uh, optional, yeah, completely optional subscription. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, all yeah. core function. Everything you're doing now, everything everybody is doing and seeing and using right now is going to stay non-subscription from us. Okay, cool. And Just... and we'll probably keep broadcasting the marching ants as a full, un, you can't modify it. It's just, it's there. Yeah. So, yeah. Now. You, you'll probably get a cleaner view this, this year. Right. So, like, you're going to get that broadcast focused view this year where you're going to, you're going to have your TNS information on one side still. But you'll be able to get more of your your cool icons, Bill. And, I, I like icons. And uh, Thank you. A, a smoother <laughs> view, basically. Yeah. So every time I go to their office, I actually write things on their board. Some, you know, he didn't. Mm-hmm. He, does. he didn't leave me any room this week. Here, I got pictures of his big board. They failed to hide the big board when I walked in there. But, yeah, he you know. he wants to resort our priority list or dev list. <laughs> so you don't need this. You don't need that. And this yeah. we don't need. Yeah. So, but speaking of what we do need is timing and scoring is uh, that Mm -hmm. was one of the big sellers originally was that we would uh, transition from transponders over to uh, GPS timing and scoring. Yeah. So that's, that's something we have, we have different levels of, of the GPS and precision. Um, So different orgs have different needs and there's some that need extreme precision. So we're we're making that available. Well, champ cars Um, are really, really fast. So yeah. (laughs) So, uh, so um, we're we're changing some of that that right now, um, as as Bill knows, um, and so we're we're putting in more accuracy. And the way that it works, we're we're still going to have some need for um, the photo finish uh, scenario, which but, we've tested and it works. Yeah. So do, doing the right steps there, we're we're absolutely able to use it. As a as a timing and scoring system, and we we have been using it, and we we've had times where uh, a transponder went down or a loop went down, and we were able to use uh, our data as the the backup or reference data and um, keep things going. Yeah. So that's I'll tell you <laughs> what that was that you know I'm watching timing and scoring freaking out you know because that's what they do, and he said we lost everything, and I'm like, huh, hey, we have timing right here, yeah, and luckily. <laughs> I I had done everything I was supposed to do, which doesn't happen yeah. every race. Yeah, that's but, uh, true. Sent before that, and and I hit it, and sure enough, it's like whoa, this it's working. So yeah, yeah, pretty awesome. So, so yeah, and we we've had times when the one transponder fails, and you know uh, TNS calculates okay, well there we we were missing four laps, and the racer comes in and says no, you're missing uh, three or five or whatever, and then we look at ours and it. Uh, either backs up or, or doesn't back up what, what TNS, but almost always backs up what TNS has, has scored. Right. So, and it's what I find really good is we can, you know, we know exactly where pit in is and pit out the sector. And they can they come to me and say, hey, how long was he in pit lane? We can see where he is here because they, they do it. They do the timing for pit lane differently than what electronics does it. And I can just go there and say, huh, how many pit stuff? Okay, four minutes and 59 seconds he was in pit lane yeah. you know or whatever you know five minutes and three seconds and there you go <clears throat> so J- james what's the accuracy of the gps based timing and scoring versus the loop based systems that most people use at the moment 
Um, so it depends on which one is specced. Um, so the highest level, if we put every bell and whistle in there, uh, they're they're quite similar. So with our highest end GPS, and when we do uh, localized correction, there there are arguments that it is. At some point, you're down to the difference of where you put the physical equipment on the car. Mm. So, um, you know, when we get into our, our sort of pro level GPS, it is well within uh, the, the dimensions of the vehicle. We we start to get to centimeter level accuracy um, when we start to talk about a the highest end system that is fully corrected. So it is it is capable of of, of fully swapping over to that system. I mean, you show us we... on the whiteboard like you did me. Yeah, I did. I probably did do that. Well, I think I said, draw me pictures. I don't understand mm-hmm. what you're saying. Yeah. Um, even now with the transponders, you know, we, we had a situation in in our in at our runoffs last year where mm-hmm. we had an absolute dead heat and oh, yeah, the, crowned, the, the, yeah, the... crowned a dual national champions and yeah and, and but they had their transponders in a slightly different area, you know, yeah, in a spec right. class. You know, and yep. and on the transponders, there was a slight, you know, by, you know, tens or thousands of a second, even thousands. Yeah. Yeah. But but when you look at the pictures, you can't there, there was there, you couldn't figure out who won the race. Um, yeah. So, you know, I guess all of the data is as good as where you place the pieces of equipment. Right. Yeah, that's it. So you, you get you can get the best best data available. And even even with the premier system, you're still every every. Pro Series still has some photo system in play. Uh, right. They're basically everybody is still using that. You're still using redundant systems to to prove it out. So it's really not not any different than the way everyone else is is implementing these systems. So um, you know when we talk about the different GPS levels of accuracy, that there are series who want to pay for that accuracy, so they get the segment times, they get the start finish time, and they get to down to centimeter level accuracy but um the reality for you know the the sort of low budget racing is that you can be within a a meter or two and you get everything that you need out of that system to be able to do the work you need to do well for those that are mad scientists and actually understand science and math and all the engineering stuff we actually have tested out a high speed uh, GoPro style camera. Actually, it's a DJI camera, and we mount it to the start tower, looking down at the cars as they come by. And we were able to test it at Road America, which is probably one of our faster tracks along the start finish line. Um, we'll be testing it again at Daytona in a couple spots. We didn't. I didn't get to test it till after August. So, um, or I think the first time I tested it was Road America, and we were uh, able to get some really good pictures. We had a close. It wasn't a finish. It wasn't for position. But two cars cross a finish line within uh, probably six or seven inches of each other, and we were able to tell the difference. It was nice and clear, and they were traveling at 120 plus miles an hour, and uh, it worked. For, it worked perfect. So yeah, but yeah, it's it's. So is the is the yeah. GPS unit separate from? The unit that the drivers look at, it is, um, and, and that's why it's so easy for us to. Yeah, Bill's gonna so b- pull Bill, one out there. Bill, do you does Champ Car mandate where that has to go? Um, and well, if you don't, should you? It's a, it's a it's a learning thing, and and originally, James, when you guys did this, we had a we had an area we had a different areas on the car that you could put it. Right. You know, you basically the roof, the dashboard, whatever. So one thing that we have found and we discussed with the Flagtronics people last week um, was that guys are putting it on the roof. Let me get this out without inking up the cable. So for those but, of you um, who, who are they, used to the put, old. Was, it's mag- It's got right. a magnet on it. So it's so like the old. And, to the roof. Yeah. And then they um, they run it down the A pillar and they put it in the door, you know, through the door and attach it up to the Flagtronics unit. Problem is that some of these cars have frames in their door. You know, the, the window frame still in and they go to close the close the door and it crushes this cable now that might not be a thing now but you know 30 or 40 shuts later um it we th- we think some gps's were getting damaged but we're gonna we're gonna do some tests and i'd like to see it like up by the window you know up on the dashboard by the window. Yeah. oh the 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 I, the benefit of putting it on the roof is that it gets better information yes. on the roof. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, if you put it through something that's going to crush it all the time, that's that's definitely problematic. And so, the good so, thing too is that it's a relatively small, relatively small connector. Right. So, so the connector is, is small enough that you can put it through and then have a grommet that right. that seals up the the cable after it. Right. Grommet. It's champ car, man. It's just, it's yeah. just duct tape. So well, or you can sit there and just have it leak on you, or, yeah. you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever you want to do. I guess. Have you seen <laughs> Troy's car? Everything yeah. leaks on you. Um, <laughs> a little dab of silicone probably gets the yeah. job done. That that would get the job done. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Science. Very cool. Silicone. You okay, Bill? I know. This is giving you some sort of traumatic <laughs> flashbacks. <laughs> I don't know. I have to deal with, uh, you know, why isn't there GPS working, Bill, in the tower? Did right. that sound like Chelsea? I, I do, I'm, I'm not going to pick on Chelsea. She's yeah. the boss. Yeah, I'm not picking on her. I'm not picking on <laughs> What you Just, do is you know, up to you, Bill. <laughs> she, well, she looks at me and it's like, I, I don't know why their shit's not working. <laughs> Yeah, you, usually we when we have that issue, we go and we find that it's not plugged in. That's the most common cause. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. um, but yeah, but we get the guys that you know. And and speaking of one of them, they're sending their GPS back to you to to take a look at. So that'll be a good test. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's always good to stretch. <laughs> this is something I found updating a couple of weeks ago at Sebring was the guy had it stretched from like a USB plug and the cable stretch. I mean, it was tight. <laughs> Ding, 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 you know, yeah. across. And that was just the USB power. So, yeah, yeah. so cars flex. Uh, <laughs> that's really? the thing. <laughs> you yeah. don't want it spring tight. <laughs> yeah. That'll, that'll cause a problem. Yeah, it is funny, though. For any any wiring harness, that's not specific to ours. Yeah, James is the king of wiring harnesses, and he would let me know that constantly. Uh, well, I don't. I don't think I was letting you know that I was the king of wearing hearts. I was just looking at what you had, <laughs> sighing and walking away. Oh, no, you did not sigh and walk away. You sighed and took massive amounts of pictures so you could show all your buddies my ball of wires. Yeah, and I did take pictures seat. so I could I could put it up on a on a wall of what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't name names, but no, but it's pretty self explanatory. Yellow MR2 ball of wire, but yeah, it, was on it the worked until the it did. Yeah, so. now it's way different. Now I've just got simple wires. So that's I think that's I think they still work. Yeah, I, I took Troy's advice and rewired it because he yelled at me massively. So there there was a ball of wire. Oh, <laughs> there was. It was big. human size. <laughs> in the it was a whole. Seat. It was the whole footwell of the dry, the passenger side. Yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah. everything worked. So why touch it? <laughs> Ish. <laughs> yeah. Mostly, well, it worked until it didn't. So. And, right. and then yeah. and Troy was driving when it didn't, which was even worse. Right. So. And when it stops. In IT terms, it had one nine reliability. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that means. And a so, ball yeah. of wires is the best thing to have when it stops working and you're trying to troubleshoot what's not working. Oh, yeah. Oh, and everything was all the same color, too. So it was all right. Oh, that, that <laughs> it's sounds one like of the a, red ones. Yeah. That sounds yeah. like a so, very Bill thing to do. Yeah. So, so Bill, nines, one nine would be a, a nine X percent. Two nines okay. would be 99. Three nines would be 99.9. Yeah. So five nine would be 99.999. And then you see how much uptime you get from that. <laughs> you, you'd be at one nine reliability, kind of yeah. like my Comcast Pretty, connection. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's enough of Bill. Let's make it <laughs> Troy. So, yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll move on. So timing. So we're going to be doing timing and scoring with it this year. Um, mm -hmm. play, you know, it's not not something yet that the racers are going to see. We're going to still be using the existing timing and scoring that we use, um, but we're going to be comparing. And yeah. once we get to the point of it matches up every single time, then we'll probably do the switch over. But that's up to the boss. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, right now we have the the two systems, and they work as redundant backups for each other. So it's it's nice to have that just from the perspective of, right. you know, you have a transponder dropout or the loop dropout, and you have you have a, a full backup system, which I, I think is helpful. But, so um, the the current scoring systems have like Race Hero and Race Monitor for right. you know the crews and you know family and friends to look at, and if it's me, they're snickering at how slow the times are. Um, yeah. Do you have the plans for an app-based system or a web-based system for that kind of stuff besides putting the marching ants with the timing pylon up 
next to and and, and to be able to pull that data in into well, let's say a spreadsheet that kind of stuff oh, wait, yeah wait. yeah so uh we're, we're still going to push to to race hero and, okay. and race monitor oh, so okay. you're still going to be able to use the traditional uh apps that you already use Got it. um and then the the subscription service that we're talking about um for the visibility for your own car sure. is also going to give you that information um, in addition to the other things. Got it. Got it. So um, you you could in theory replace you know some of those tools with the tool that that we provide, um, or you could have multiple tools. It's, it's up to the Great. to the user. But we'll we'll be providing information that that um, nobody else has currently, which is where is your car, what is the flag status, um, and essentially is the driver okay. How so, much, Brian? Brian, the timing and scoring on our marching ants is actually based off of what the info that's uh, sent to race monitor. Oh, okay. So, yeah. okay, cool. How how much work have you put into making this your system integrate with what's out there right now, so that those of us who don't like change, because you know we all just love change, yeah, can can make it you know use it without even really thinking twice about it. Um, there's a fair bit of work going into it currently, yeah. Um, and and we have uh, some some partners there and people who are helping us with with that too, who have been using those systems or integrated with those systems for years. And um, in some cases, you know, they're they're very eager to to bring us into their their system and workflow because it's a it's a natural thing to do. And then they can start to provide things like flag information through through their services too. Well, and you've got to think if this is the the future of what timing and scoring is going to be, rather than what we're using now, then right. then they probably don't want their technology to become obsolete because they've put a lot of money into it as well, and you know people who are using it and and some of us pay a subscription for that, you know they want that still that data, so this would keep yeah. their their companies in business too. Yeah, I mean we try to stay out of the sort of. Uh, politics and, sure. and you know a lot of that that sort of element of racing and in, in terms of who's got what where it's it's more based on what what can we provide to the customer what are we doing what right. what's valuable and helpful to them and mm -hmm. we're just trying to provide the best we can and um you know not not getting into the fray with sure. with others uh, for the most part we're we're in cooperation with with um, uh, most of the market so there's there's not you know, especially in this this area of the market, when we're talking about the grassroots racers, there's there there aren't other practical solutions that provide the things that we can provide. There there are solutions that are on the higher end, but you know they they're at higher cost with high subscriptions that the grassroots racers, um, just just like the racers in our company would <laughs> would say, uh, no, <laughs> yeah, that's that's not a thing we want to go to. Right, we don't want another forced subscription we don't another one another you know high cost thing etc we, we think okay. of it now as you know this is less than the investment of a single tire for most so question asked um mm -hmm. do these drop out can it just stop working if it's properly wired what do you do it goes blank or just freezes <clears> or what? um yeah so we we have um with most of the orgs they're going to have uh, units on hand to do uh, swap out or replacement. Uh, we're we're working with the orgs to make sure that that's the case, so that even if we don't have a, a rep available or somebody at the track, that we can do a, a quick change. Um, usually, uh, the the issues that we see are related to power. Power isn't provided to the unit, um, or something happened in the harness somewhere along the way. Um, that is by far the most common scenario. Um, and usually in race control, you can see that we have a a battery icon and then we show whether it's charging or not so sometimes race control can identify that ahead of time and say okay you all need to get a more reliable power supply and we've had some there have been some interesting stories we um we ran across some people who are powering them with with uh batteries uh so like a milwaukee battery or some battery banks and they plug the usb into the battery bank and when our unit goes to the low power green state which i just changed it to green um over here it looks like the so, little arrows yeah yeah so it's flashing green right now um but after 30 seconds this will go to a low power green state so i'll show that in a minute but when it goes to the low power green state it doesn't actually draw enough power uh to keep some 
battery banks active. In other words, it's it's the the draw is so low that they don't recognize something is connected and they time out. The in the Milwaukee case, I think it was 15 or 30 minutes, where it just stopped providing power altogether. Huh. So they had to uh, hardwire it basically, and th- we found things like that are are more common than you'd expect. Right. So, um, the the the, uh, the short version is replacement at the track. The long version is that we'll um, they can be sent in. We can check them. Um, when you're under warranty, you can we can just straight replace it. Uh, in general, we want to see them work in the field, so um, we're we're honoring replacements for those. So uh, John had one lock up once and needed to completely disconnect the power, including the battery, to get it to reset. Does the rebooting, turning it on off and on, does that do the same thing or? Yeah. So there's an on off routine on it. Um, if if it happened in the past, we we have since added um, a routine that's a, a watchdog routine, which um, actually reboots the unit if it's locked up. So any <laughs> any newer firmware um, should be sort of self correcting in that sense. Okay. Um, that it self recovers. Um, and there was a point where there was sort of a a, a limit on that function, but um, currently it it doesn't have a, a limit in place, so it, it comes back somewhat seamlessly. That's a low-power uh, green state. I know early in the year, with, with Champ Car specifically in 2023, we did have, um, I think, a, an early version that was unfortunately more problematic, and we got some pretty quick updates for that out into the field. Um, Whenever we've seen those at races, we've we've updated them, and we're we're working really hard to make sure that we don't we don't have any you know firmware updates that that are that are problematic. We do have a testing procedure in place, but didn't catch a, a small sort of hidden thing. Right. And um, yeah, we're we're working really hard to make sure that that's never never repeated. Yeah, those are the ones again. They look at me. Chelsea looks at me, and you know. Yeah, but... it's always your fault, Bill. Well, you know, <laughs> probably was some somewhere. All right. Um. All right. So, as you got some troubleshooting. I do have a question. Uh, so okay. this the Flagtronics harness has two. Harness, you, know, you can plug it in either through five volt USB. Yes. Uh, two amp plus. Right. Or you have you can run it straight off twelve volt. Can you run them both at the same time? You should not do both at the same time. Um, so it switches between one or the other, uh, but there's really no reason to have both, both connected. Okay. We, we do, we do connect our, our PCs, but you don't, if you connected your laptop in a car and you had your laptop with a charger in the car and you had 12 volts connected in your car. I might've been told to do that in the past if you did all three of those things then you you could in theory create a semi-isolated ground loop oh ground loop yeah yeah so yeah then... ed don't do that <laughs> <laughs> well ed does that he has usb and 12 volt all the time but yeah. on the same car so i mean on the i mean USB. 12 volt to connect to the pc no to the you no um to, uh 12 volt using the 12 volt harness mm-hmm. those little lines orange yeah they're two two wires for 12 volt yeah and then the usb just for power yes so they're redundant power provision yeah is the idea yeah yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> if it's it worth, i mean it it there's a switcher that that's in, internally there's a switcher between those and there's there are diodes in place to prevent harm um and the, the scenario I outlined also includes a PC and another power supply to Oh right. Any, okay. Any yeah. Loop. I meant in the race car itself. So Yeah, they they both be ground referenced to the same thing, kind of, depending on how you sourced your five volt. Um, but yeah, in general I'd say choose a reliable power supply that is that is fused and, and run run that one. And doesn't bounce out when you hit big bumps or curbs or whatever. Yeah, that's um, I and mean, we've seen where people mount them on on 
mountings that aren't solid and they have we've, we've actually seen massive wrecks where a lot of equipment goes flying including an ft200 and then you know harnesses rip apart because of high g incidents um but that's the same thing as other electronics that are similarly mounted so you do want a robust mounting system that's not going to rip out if you have a really bad accident because we do have um, an accident flag in there that will record the G's and then there's a button that you can press if you have an accident that will ask if you're okay. And if we see that you press the button, then we know you're responsive. Um, and then we can also prioritize uh, events in the car. So um, <clears throat> that's one of the really important features. Uh, if there's a multiple incidents on track or if there's a multi-car incident, you know, we might be able to see that someone hit with uh, over 100 Gs and then the other people had much lighter incidents and um, the safety crews can prioritize. And but do, you th do you think an FT200 could have helped the Dallas Cowboys yesterday? <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's hope not, this Packer fan <laughs> says. I, I, I'm not sure how, how that one's supposed to. Yeah, I mean... Right. You could strap it to the helmets. There'd probably be some accident yeah. <laughs> flags. Yeah, we going saw off. that didn't work well this weekend either. Helmet. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. We we found that going to different races, one of the things that um, the safety crews absolutely love um, having this in the in the vehicles. We put them in the safety vehicles, which hopefully Bill Bill will be doing. Uh, yes, this year. and we've been doing it. It's, it's difficult that we we've yeah different yeah. yeah. Once we're, you get we're getting, down we're getting there. We're getting. Okay. There. So once you get it in the safety vehicles, they they absolutely love it because that all of a sudden now you've you've got visibility all across the track for what equipment is where, and that that reduces the calls and race control on the on the safety net just dramatically because so much of it is focused on what truck is where, where this ambulance is, where that rollback is, uh, et cetera. So um, being able to see all that and being able to prioritize the incident means that the safety crews can get to you faster potentially. Right. And we're not gonna we're not gonna put it on my ambulances. We'll put them in the safety car, but that's mainly because okay. we broadcast it out. So um, uh, we don't want mom. You know, mom knows that the car just wrecked. Oh, there's an ambulance <laughs> out there, but it wasn't out there for the last wreck. What's going on? You know, so and it just yeah. maybe as a blocking vehicle, but mom doesn't. Know that, so well, you can you can do your visibility settings too, and then yeah. we'll have that. And then I saw that in the new update, so that's kind of cool. So right, you also yeah. yeah, you don't have to call them ambulances on the screen. You can use an icon that doesn't look like an ambulance. Yeah, tow truck. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. So yellow MR2. So speaking that. as a diva, <clears throat> as a diva race announcer, James, um, mm -hmm. really all, all of that safety vehicle stuff is is to make my life better. Um, yeah. And 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 you know all of this stuff about you know being able to help with 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 flag lack of flaggers and you know safety for the drivers, all that stuff is yeah minuscule minor stuff. It's all about what's what can help me as an announcer. So. Um, sarcasm alert, folks. Just warning yeah. before the chat <laughs> blows up here. Uh, but no, I, you know, I had the opportunity with the marching ants this weekend, and and it just it, it was really easy to understand quickly what was happening and and where the problems were, um, which is of course really important for race control, but not nearly as important for race control as it is for your race announcers. Um, yeah. Um, but no, it just it's such a powerful system in the, in the information. That is is coming at you, and I I'm a huge. Yeah, Paulie thought it was a distraction fan. at first. I'm pretty certain. Yeah. And of course, now he uses it as a tool. So yeah. That's pretty good. I, that, so that happens in most race controls. We found is that at first it's it's difficult to work with the new tool, but quickly. Usually, it takes only a, a race or two. People start to want it in front of every. Every station yeah. in race control. Yeah. And then we start putting monitors everywhere and putting out a, a feed to the, <laughs> you know, sort of everybody in the in the organization. And, um, you know, I think you mentioned something during the weekend, uh, Brian, which was um, the way the view is, you can see the car going around <clears throat> and then below a certain speed. So uh, green flag below 30 miles per hour. Uh, it starts to show the speed. And so you can see the car slowing down. And then when it comes to a stop, you can see it stopped. And a lot of times those calls are happening before they're coming in over any other method. Right. So we're, we're getting not well, just a preview of the, of the car when it's going to be called in, but we're getting it before. And then we're also seeing the, the prelude to that, which uh, sometimes you'll see multiple vehicles or you see a hit between the vehicles and 
you get this real time information that isn't isn't really a formal call yet. Well, and, and the other thing that so, I was able to see was was you know you you know we normally keep you normally kept it in the in the full track version, but right. then when there was an incident, someone whether it was I don't know if it was you that was running the machine or someone else was able yeah. to zoom focus in on the area so yeah. much so that you yeah. race control Collie knows. Just, Collie just stepped on here, so just to let you know. Yeah, okay. so, so much <laughs> so that race control and your announcers know where the, yeah. you know, which side of the track it is, whether it's upstream or downstream from from the from the bridge between turn six and seven, you know, so you can tell the, you can tell the, the announcers can tell the camera people, and more importantly, race control oh, can tell. Oh, see, yeah, where <laughs> it is. But, so I have a little story yeah. with that. Is okay. um, when we were at uh, Hallett. Yes, Hallett. Mm -hmm. Last year, year before last, um, we were still testing Flagtronics. Oh, Hallett! It was the first time we we were all buying them, and we had a we had a car go off over the uh, off the track and over a guardrail, and we were actually able to see exactly where he was and when it happened. Yeah. Um, yeah, which was really cool. We could let the safety folks know even before <clears throat> they got there that he was way off into the trees. Yeah. So, and of course the map showed trees there, but they'd already cut them down at you know for us or not us, but <laughs> prior to the yeah. picture being taken. <laughs> that happened at VIR two at night. Lost a car off in the woods basically, and they they couldn't spot them from the flag stand anymore. So we could see where they were and basically directed the the tow truck to go in the woods right. over here. Yeah, well, we did the same Go thing at Nelson and Legends. Wood. Yeah, we yeah. were able to do the same thing at Nelson Legends, find a car that was out in the in the uh, weeds. Now at night, which is pretty cool. So, yeah. so one of the things that that <clears throat> the benefit for Flagtronics for the sanctioning body, especially right. for us. So mm -hmm. my job race day is to run Flagtronics and to run the the logs and to listen to the corner workers. So and and I'm filling in the logs based on what the corner workers are saying. Now, I'm watching Flagtronics as well, and there's been times when I'm getting information from Flagtronics before the corner worker um, is sending it over the radio. So a lot of times, the corner workers, they, they're required to say a car number, and right. a color, and all this stuff, and they might not have that just yet. So they're yeah. waiting to, for the incident to be over. By that time, I've already let race control know, you know, the race director know, hey, car 57, he's come to a stop. And he's against the right, you know, driver's right. Um, but it's car 57. I don't know the color, but. Right. And, yeah. and when I get done with that, she's already starting to make, or he is already starting to make decisions of what they're going to do as a corner worker calls it in. Right. Basically yeah. saying the same thing. Well, so, and, and, and a lot, there are a lot of times too, where you, you get a, a view of the track that you can't get otherwise. So sometimes a car might go four wheels off in a corner. And then they go four wheels off in another corner, and they go four wheels off in another corner. And depending on the org, they might not get called in for one incident. Right. Right. You're waiting for multiple incidents in that corner for a call. But when you have the view of the entire track and you can see the cars going off, well, all of a sudden now you can see, because you have this cohesive overview, you can see, well, that car just went off five times in one lap. Now, they didn't do it twice in any one corner, but... They just went all five times in one lap, so right. you know, we we might need to figure out what's going on there if if there's something uh, to worry about or we need to take some action. Um, and we also have this ability to see when there are multiple incidents on the track at the same time. Um, again, it depends on the org, depends on the scenario, but sometimes calls can get queued. So, um, oh yeah, you yeah. might have three incidents at once and. You know that information has to go through the call queue, whereas uh, with our system you can see everything at once immediately. Well, and, and yeah, there's we... often incidents where the flaggers can't see the car number anymore, yeah. whether it was too far away or whether the car is pitched in a certain you know with we just can't see the car number and yeah, up against the wall exactly we can see it yeah exactly we can see it. so um, yeah we've and, we've provided the car number for those scenarios. A, a, Many, many times. And, where... and what's helpful with that is when you know the car number, you can figure out what to dispatch to the area, you know, yeah. and, and that's helpful, especially when you've got multi-class racing where, you know, yeah. it's different types of, of stuff, you know, different types of equipment out there. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and you know, the thinking about the, the safety workers again, you know, going to that point, they, 
They absolutely love to be able to get that distinction and that information because uh, some who have adapted to it really well. So so down in uh, in Sebring, it's um, we work with Billy and, and Michelle and to get the vis visibility to see uh, what what kind of car it is and what they need to do. And that information is critical. And one, one thing Champ Car is, has really been doing that's been unique is the Champ Car goes all across the U.S. And they've been bringing Code 35 to tracks all across the U.S., which you know, really started with BIR. And um, now, because we have enforcement, um, tracks and safety workers are are, are begging oh for it. God, they're, yes. they're asking all these other orgs to do it. And, yeah. you know, for us, we provide the tool. Um, that that decision is not up to us. We can make recommendations right. and we can, we can also convey that the safety workers and the crews love it and the track loves it. Um, but those decisions have to be made at the org level because those those are not our, our decision. But I will say that the feedback has been we love what Champ Car is doing. We love to see that that code 35. Um, we can do hot pulls faster. We can get you more green flag time, and we all feel safer doing it. So that, what's crazy was like Watkins Glen and Road America were <laughs> like, no, we're not doing this. We are yeah. not doing this, and yeah. we did it. And they're like, yeah, we love this. <laughs> it's like I told yeah. you. Told you. This, this, so in 2023, we we did um, – so you, you all did uh, – Champ Car did uh, Watkins Glen and did Code 35. And um, I understand they were doing hot poles uh, yeah. where they don't normally do hot poles at all. At all. Nope. Um, and we actually, with, uh, with Trans Am, we did Code code 60. 60, yeah. But it's not 60 – so Code 35 uh, is mile per hour. It's based on Code 60 in Europe, which is kilometers per hour. Right. And code sixty in the in the Trans Am variant is um, sixty miles per hour because right, they right. they would have trouble cooling their engines and operating right. down at that speed. But um, under their code sixty, uh, Watkins also uh, did hot poles, and it just the difference in safety for those corner workers is so dramatic. Um, it I think it's I think it's going to quickly roll out throughout the U.S. and and really Champ Car has been a pioneer in that. You yeah, know, it's, obviously using the enforcement that we can provide. Yep, and you can thank Chelsea. <laughs> She's the one that pretty much tested it, and at the first uh, three races she did, and then Dana Dana liked it. The feedback was really good from the tracks and from the the racers, and here we are. So the only the only downside is there's no more racing for that, you know, to, to scrunch the field back up, which again goes back to the priority is getting that guy help out on the yeah. track um yeah. and slowing everybody down so that safety can get out there at the quickest possible time not for you to catch up to the guy in front of you the priority is to get to that guy and when you sh slow down with code 35 we're able to get them back um get to them quick get them back off the track and then get back to racing very quickly yeah well, there's gonna be some options we have some uh, pit entry and pit exit signs uh, available yeah jimmy so. keeps telling me about that i'm like <laughs> <laughs> So that's gonna that's gonna provide some interesting options for you to be able to do uh, to pack the field back up too, and then you yeah. can also go yellow part of the time, and then before you go back green, go yellow part of the time to pack the field back up. But right. probably less of an issue in Champ Car than it is right. in in some. Yeah, we're just series. we're gonna keep it simple. Um, yeah, you know. So well, yeah. and, and when you. Well, I was going to say, when you don't pack the field up, because, you know, there's this whole theory, you know, cautions breed cautions. And yeah. that's because you pack the field up, and now you've got basically a restart with everybody mushed together again. And mushed, yeah, that's a technical motorsports term, by the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. But when you use when you don't allow the field to pack up and you go back to green, it's you, you're less likely to have that cautions breed cautions scenario because yeah. you've got some gaps that are out there built in and and – you kind of kind of help with that process. So, and if the idea is to keep the keep the racing green flag as long as possible, that's the positive. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, the 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 other side is that you uh, a lot of series are going to want that um, action packed right uh, green flag restart. Right. I mean, as the announcer, <laughs> yeah, I want the field packed yeah. together because you know that now makes a race that may have been <clears throat> kind of a clunker all of a sudden exciting again. Because yeah. all those big gaps are gone, but I also understand that you know we're, we're talking about safety, and and that's really the purpose of electronics, um, is to help us go and do what we do safer. Yeah, I always liked the uh, the other way until I got in the tower, and it's like, uh, 
yeah, okay, that's not good. You know, so <laughs> that's where Flagtronic comes in. Because, you know, there's always that slow guy in front of you in their little Nissan 240SX that just gets in your way and <laughs> causes all kinds Do of... Do you want to tell the story of the bill bar? Should that be, bill bar. Should that be on this one? So, <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> Your car rearranged my windshield wipers, basically, because uh, uh-huh. <laughs> we were in a line of cars at VIR. This my, I was at the back, and there was like four cars in, in ahead, and your car was in front of me. And we're going down the S's at VIR on south for the 12-hour. And, of course, the MR2, you can't see over oh. anything because you're so low. 65 minutes, folks. 60... No, I said it earlier. No, no. I said it earlier. That's the first I not, time. I have not said Opal GT. I did you say haven't? MR2 no, earlier. No, I don't think so. I believe we're 65 <laughs> minutes in, folks, before the first MR2 reference. <laughs> so, um, all of a sudden, James Driver, something happened in front. Hit the. Everybody slammed on the brakes, except for me, because didn't see it in time because I was right on his bumper. And, uh, yeah, it lifted the car up, his car up, mine went underneath, came down, you know, whatever. We're done with the race. Everybody's yelling at me at one point. Not everybody's yelling at me. But, yeah, there, there, was, there was an issue that you found when you got back to the shop. What was that, James? Uh, the fact that you forklifted our car up by the gas tank. <laughs> So, so James, we and learned... also you weren't that close, Bill. You had a good gap. <laughs> Is I, I, yeah? D- does flag... that two second rule, man? Two second rule. Uh huh. D- As we learned this so week, we put in we put in the bill bar, uh... which is this drop down bar, <laughs> and this hard bar that was way overbuilt, way too severe. And uh, we had to protect the tank from the Bill Strong possibility. Because nice. it might have dented his tank pretty good, too. Oh, so, yeah, it. it did. Yeah, I okay. love it. We had an MR2-sized, you know, <laughs> dent right in our gas tank. <laughs> the whole Toyota emblem on it. Uh, yeah, pretty too much. Funny. Too funny. Uh, D- does yeah. the Flagtronics unit measure uh, altitude? Because I found out <laughs> this weekend that might have been a good data point uh, yeah. for one of our races. <laughs> <laughs> it, it 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 does have altitude. Yes, <laughs> I don't I don't think that's a variable we're recording, but it is in there. Yeah, uh, it's a suggestion. I'll write that on the big whiteboard next time I go over there. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Take take a put put four four off into a whole new meaning. Oh God. So Sebring, it just be going. Doo, 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 doo. Yeah. Oh, funny. Yeah, we do have. Um, once we get a hit, we do go from a basically a two hertz data rate recording to a five hundred hertz. Um, and at that point, we actually measure X, Y, and Z on the accelerometer. So, so if C- you did hit, then yeah, we would yeah. see the, the, the full uh, high-speed impulse of the oh, car yeah. <laughs> going up and down. So yeah, yeah Sebring, it, would, it would still we, be in the data. At Sebring, we did have some early hits when guys were hitting the curbing. And uh, you could see, yeah. it's a, you know, impact, impact. It's like, <laughs> oh, God, no, it's just curbing. It's just curbing. Mm-hmm. I'm watching him still move. So, yeah, so uh, for, for this year, we, we um, th- it's always a fine line to, to make sure that you are capturing the incidents um, while uh, not providing false positives, right? That's right. a really difficult thing. And because the the myriad level of installations, I've, I've, I've talked to some people in the industry, and um, uh, the, the easiest description is to say that it's a near impossible task to cover right. everything and do that that well. Um Sebring is really your worst case in in the U.S. Um, for for that specific thing. So, for 2024, we're going to have some settings that get pushed out uh, per organization. So that means that we're able to control some of these things, like per class, to say that okay, this open wheel car has different settings thresholds than a right. GT style car or production based sure, car sure, because sure. they're they're uh, kinematics are just very, very different. Yeah, they're sprung we, differently. We also have and... some other things coming down the pipe to um, make sure we're still capturing those events, but reduce uh, false positives. Huh. Interesting. Bill, anything else before we let James go? Because we've uh, we're, we, we've already gone we off the rails. Exceeded our limit. Yeah. <laughs> I see James all the time, so I, I talk to him all the time. So I don't really have anything else. So all right. Kids, kids and wife doing good. You know. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're doing better than I am. I I came back with with something from Sebring, so I got my my cough now. Uh, Florida, you are getting older. You had that nose wide open, you know. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that's it. Maybe the nose strips are are getting me sick. <laughs> no, I you know, 
I think we covered a, a, a lot of the, the points. Um, we, Is there anything we, we missed? Um, so we're rolling out with, with uh, you know, this is the Champ Car podcast. But um, <laughs> for Champ Car racers, um, it's going to be... <laughs> it's going to be... Um, Version 7? Yeah. Well, what I was going to say is mostly for the racers. They're, they're going to now have support in series... Um, other racing series too, when they have their equipment. Um, right. So they're going to be able to use it if, if they're racing in some, some other ones this year, there's uh, we're obviously at Sebring this past weekend, we were with SCCA. Um, and we're also uh, uh, working with WRL and we'll be working with, there'll be a lot more announcements in 2024 uh, is the bottom line. There'll be a lot more support at the tracks. Um, and sort of the short of it is that your equipment is going to work in those places. So, um, as you've invested in your equipment for Champ Car, you know they they made the right choice. Um, so congratulations to them, and as opposed to us, in the sense that um, it's it's going out to uh, a lot of the U.S. I mean, we'll we'll have coverage in a, in a lot of the U.S. with with a lot of orgs um, pretty this year and and going forward. Um, you know, the safety crews love it. Um, we're always improving the product. And we're adding more features and we're allowing expansions and add-ons and, you know, trying to stay true to the, the grassroots ethos, uh, us being champ car racers ourselves. And, um, you know, we, we really deeply appreciate the, the cooperation we've had with champ car over the years, because <clears throat> this is a system that was built in, and developed uh, as champ car racers that we've worked with champ car uh, for, for years on to refine it and bring it to the, the level of sophistication that it has today. So, you know, we, we owe uh, a huge thanks to, to Champ Car and just that, that cooperative environment and that ability to, to work the way we have over the years. So it's been really important to us and we, we want to, you know, keep Champ Car as just a, a critical partner in this and allow us to, to continue to improve and just make it better for everybody. I mean, ultimately the goal here is to, keep everyone safe and make make racing better at the, the lowest cost point that we can, which is a really difficult goal, but we're, right, right. you know, um, we, we don't want to, we don't want to be the, 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 the big evil corporation that, um, <laughs> you know, can, can come out of things like this. We, we, we really want to stay uh, true to the roots here. Right. Yeah. Well, we want to thank you too. We have you on the side of uh, all the co- champ cars this year. Uh, your decal will be at the bottom, though. So, but it's, it's yeah. Uh, <laughs> what is that? You know, okay. That, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's the focus is that people are always looking down. So I figured that's a good place to put it. You know, uh-huh. right? Yeah, top, top and bottom, I guess. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So you know, and you know, uh, the best for last, man. There you, you know? go. <laughs> All right. But yes, thank you. And uh, I know we got a lot of big things coming for twenty twenty four. And uh, I know our racers are going to appreciate a lot of these cha- or a lot of these upgrades and the system itself. We actually just upgraded all of our light boards to the latest yeah. versions, so they should work with it. And we got brand new spanking batteries that Jimmy's all proud of. So uh, yeah. everything should work pretty flawlessly this year. Yes, it will, Jimmy. And uh, uh, one thing that we are going to do, we're going to give Jimmy an FT200. Mm-hmm. And it's going to say FT200 in big letters on it, so he can have <laughs> that on pit in. So that he knows when the flag state is changing, and he knows when to prepare for all those guys coming in for their code oh, nice. 35 pit stop. Makes sense. So, yep. Yeah, you can give him a handheld remote too. That's no, just... no, no. Well, <laughs> I was gonna say that's coded to a zone that you're not using. Oh, uh, yeah. We don't want to give Jimmy control. Don't give Jimmy control, man. He'll just start pressing buttons. <laughs> yeah, your panels are um, a little more than three times brighter for this year, so that'll be. Uh, you know, people who've been racing with them for years. Um, we had we had brighter ones elsewhere, and we've upgraded them for Champ Car for this year. So yeah. the bigger batteries are there because it's soaking a, a lot more power to provide a lot more brightness. So yeah. that's that is going to be a big upgrade for oh, yeah. uh, Champ Car this year, especially at night. Like yeah, well, it's still meters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean it's still meters based on the the light levels. No, when I you, know. You have I'm the just... settings correct. Um, <laughs> Bill. <laughs> yes, I, uh, Jimmy. Jimmy. <laughs> 
um, so it, you know, it dims. It's not going to blind yeah. you. It has to. It has to be exceedingly bright during the day. Right. And if you use that same daytime brightness at night, it would it would be problematic actually. So, um, yeah, as long as it's set set properly, you'll get dimmer at night, but brighter than it, it was. And then, um, you know, you'll be able to see it better during the day. Yeah. Great. Cool. All right. All That's right, it. James. We're done, James. Take care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank we're not you. Have a chat session. That we just keep on going to ninety right, minutes. We could. We, we could. We could. But you know, he's on the West Coast. He hasn't had dinner yet. I, that is so, true. That is yeah. true. But I'm so, here for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, thank you, James, for joining us, and we'll have you back on again. You know, and uh, of course, you, I've got your hotline number, so I can call you at any time of the day and night. So, uh, mm -hmm. and thanks for picking up. Yeah, you know, no so, problem. Because if you don't, they're... Alaric will. I'll call Alaric. So. <laughs> but he, he he knows what he's doing too. Oh yes, so. yes. Good. There, the whole crew at Flagtronics, which is uh, you know, uh, Alaric, uh, Morgan, James, um, Collie. Uh, I don't know the new young guy. Yeah, uh, Thomas has been uh, Thomas, traveling yeah. with us, and then we we have Charlie, and we we have yeah, we have so. some other travel guys too. So, um, you know, that's one of those things. We we have more orgs, and so we have. Our, our travel crew is expanding also. So you'll, you'll see uh, potentially some more faces this year too. Yep. Yep. Right. And of course, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> so J Jimmy, right. Jimmy has been great. I I'll give a shout out to Jimmy. I, I, we saw that video of, uh, I think it was Daytona where a racer <laughs> came in and they're like, look, I just couldn't see my, my electronics unit. And then Jimmy goes up. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, you, you have it turned. Do you have the brightness turned on? you turn it all the way down like watch this click click yeah. and he's like oh yeah that's great yeah <laughs> now I, can, and, I can see it perfectly and it's been more than once i mean yeah. many times he's done that which and he'll let us know on the radio all about it yeah so which is really funny yeah so, so. The, the, there's a variable and you can change it to be make it brighter or dimmer um yeah. and so uh, you know sometimes people change it up or down and then yeah. they can change well, they don't it know down. they just start pressing buttons and you know, and at nighttime, that might have been when they set the, the set the system up in their car at nine o'clock at night. That might have been the the proper setting, but they get out in the day with the sun rising behind them, you can't see it. Yeah, yeah. Well, they do have lights in their front and back, and they adjust to the ambient brightness level. Right. Um, the new ones have the the front sensor both both front and back. Yeah, uh, I don't. So in general, that. in most situations, they do it all on their own. But yeah, yeah some people do adjust them up or down. I don't. Ha I don't have. That. Yeah, well, uh, I'll I'll do I'll I'll do the the brief. So there's setting one, which is using the there's a, a light sensor front, yep. and there's one back. So this is a uh, kind of a low setting, which I'll hit uh, yellow here. Um, so this is the low setting that's using light metering, and then two is medium with light metering, and then three is medium or high with light metering, and so that gets blown out by the camera. Right. If you choose not to use the light settings, it's got uh, low, and then medium, yeah, and then high, which will probably yeah. Yeah, I like really the high one. I, I honestly like the high version because it's it. You can see it. You know yeah. it's going off. So yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, there's some people who do. Um, yeah. So those settings are all available to you, and we have the setting to invert it. We also have the CAN bus setting, so you can change the settings internally. Yep. Um, there's a rental feature, so you can put it on rental mode or not. Um, and so you have a lot of control over the FT200, and we do have the software at our website, electronics.com, and uh, under downloads. And so you can download the software. You can see your serial number on the bottom. You can see it in a readme file on yep. the drive. It appears as a USB drive. You can also see it in the software. Um, and you can do everything through the software that we offer as well. So you can if, do if you hold updating. both buttons down, it will show you the, the number. Mm-hmm. Cool. There you go. Yeah, it shows you the last three of your yep. ID number. Yep. All right. We need to go. <laughs> all good. James Brian's Ballinger. Fa Brian, Brian's family's like, I need to eat. I need to eat. It's all good. <laughs> it's fine. James Ballinger from Flagtronics. Thanks for being with us. And uh, I'll probably see you somewhere down the road as well. Yeah. So. Yep. All right. Sounds good. Good all to see right. you all again. Good Thanks, to see Dave. you. All right, Bill. <laughs> I think right. I think We're this is a record. Yeah, no, it's not. We've we've talked a lot longer in a couple of ones. I know it's hey, it's good record. We're going to Road Atlanta here in a couple of weeks. Yep. Um, 
we are up to, I believe, almost 60 cars. Nice. A um, couple have dropped out, I think, but it will, I'll have to look at that in the morning. But, yeah, it's uh, we need we need some more cars there, guys. We uh, I know, uh, you know, we just need more cars. Great. We're going. But we need more cars. <laughs> so we got a VIR coming up after that, Harris Hill after that, and then the National Championship at NCM Motorsports Park in Kentucky. And uh, that's kind of filling up good. We are Jimmy's uh, home building trophies, and we just got a whole shipment today. So he's putting all that stuff together, and we're getting ready. We're almost there, man. So enough of me. Let's send it back to you, Brian. Thanks. All right. Well, that's going to do it for another episode of Inside Champ Car. Do you like what you hear? I got a button to press here because we got some cool music. If you like what you hear... <laughs> I'm like, I've lost control of my brain. If you like what you hear, uh, subscribe to the uh, Inside uh, the Champ Car Live YouTube channel or the Racing Wire uh, Podcast Network. Uh, it would also be great if you share it all on your social medias. Comment on the Champ Car Facebook page. New episodes every week. He's Bill Strong. I'm Brian Polanski. Have yourself a great week, and go have fun with cars.